here with Polymer Clay artist Cindy Holt. And Cindy, you blog about color and all of your inspiration. You have some great ideas for us to make it really custom and make it our own style today. That's true. You know, polymer clay comes in so many beautiful colors now, but sometimes you want to get just that green from your blouse. So and you have secret techniques for how to do that, right? Oh, it's not, not secret so techniques. Secret, huh? No, it's not so secret. All right. And it's pretty easy to do, too. I like to make these beautiful bands of colors. Sometimes I match a photo, a particular photo, to give myself a challenge. Sometimes I just take a particular color clay and say, I'm going to mix the craziest things I can with this and see what we come up with. And it's just, a, it's amazing, the, the colors that come up. So when I color mix, what I do is I sheet the clay out and then I use a cutter to give me the same volume of clay on each one, just like this. And I stack them up. You can see here, this is one to one, so I have one of each circle. And I would put it through the pasta machine and blend it thoroughly, and then just cut it out again. And really important for me, I etch on the back what the color mix is, yeah. so I know. This is a great tool for your studio. You can keep these and yes. refer to them. And that's what I do. This is, this is the actual color mix set for this photo. Okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah, so this is two parts of the pink to one part of the yellow. This is actually souffle, so it's so 80s and canary. <laughs> this is two canaries and one so 80s. Okay. Now this one is tricky because this is four to one. So it's four halves to one of these. Oh, okay. Yeah. When I get done, I have these beautiful mixes of colors like this. So what I started doing is playing because, you know, there's no waste on polymer clay. No, we use everything. That's right. So I just flatten these out a little bit and run them through the pasta machine. And then I take tools and texture it. And look at the amazing, this is called Mokumegani. It's a Japanese, ancient Japanese metalsmith technique that we adapted to polymer clay. And this is actually made from the scraps. Oh, well, just how like do this. we do it? Let me show you. Okay. It's cool. I start with three colors. You can cheat and do four or five colors if you want to. On my machine, it's about a number three for this. You want sort of a medium, small, but not quite small. You can figure it out on your machine which way you need to go. I generally try to put a light color or a bright color in between the two mid-tone colors. Okay. Now that I have the three stacked up like this, and this is really neat for me. I trimmed them up for you. I it got fancy really for you, good. girl. Well, and again here, if you really wanted to bring up the contrast, you could hold it under your light. I mean, with these three colors that you chose, they're yeah. obvious. But if you have three that are a little bit closer, you hold it under your lamp. Make sure you make got sure it. you have the right color. Oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> you know, because sometimes you're not you're not quite sure if they're going to pop or not. That's right. a really good yeah, it idea. Yeah, brings up the contrast. Yeah, or you can add in a tiny layer of black or white. Oh, that would make it stand out uh -huh. too. If you're matching a particular thing, yeah. like the palette in your blouse, because they're kind of close colors. Mm -hmm. But you see a blackout outlines on everything there? Perfect. We can do the same thing. All right. So I'm going to keep it on the same setting that I made my layers with. Okay. I'm going to roll it through. Now I'm going to accordion fold it just like this. See that? Yes. And the reason I do that is because now I have two different colors here because I'm not making up my mind yet what color I want on top. Oh, okay. So it's going to be an yes. experiment here. I'm going to roll it through again. Cindy's Creative Lab. That's true. Because as you flatten these layers, the colors change just a little bit. Yeah, I see And that. I want to see which, which color I want on top. Okay. The reason being because, okay, there we go. That color that's on top is going to become the color that is in the bottom of the crater. Okay. So I'm going to flatten this just a little bit with my acrylic roller. There we go. Now, these are called style and detail tools, okay. ball stylus tools. I start with the biggest one, and I'm pushing hard. Now, this is kind of like a geology lesson, too, because this is exactly how the layers and the earth were formed, too. When you see those beautiful striated bands of color in the earth. It's all that pressure. It's all that pressure. We're doing our own little thing here. I have kind of a particular little pattern that I do, sort of like daisy petals with the middle one around here. And there is an ultimate reason why I do that, and I'll show you that in just a bit. You know, again, there is no waste, right? We right. use everything. I like a lot of texture, so I cover a lot of this. Okay. And then the final one I do is the tiny one. And this 
goes through very, very easily. So <laughs> I'm trying to just lightly push with this so that I don't have stab holes through the whole thing. This is not a good thing to do, probably if you're really angry at somebody. <laughs> or I don't know, it could be tension relief. Yeah, then again, it could be, yeah. Okay, now that we have that, I'm gonna move this out of the way just a little bit. So I have some room. I'm working on a tile. You want a smooth surface for this so that the clay sticks well to it, okay? Okay. Because what we're gonna do next is do very thin slices of this. My particular method, I always set everything to the side a little bit so I can see the cut. Okay. Even like when I'm cutting canes, I do that. I'm gonna bend the blade just a little bit and start slicing as thin as I can. Oh, this clay just slices like warm butter. There you go. Isn't that from a movie? I think so. I think so too. Look at that. That's awesome. Isn't that amazing? Yes. It's so cool looking. Now I'm gonna finish off just, no, I think I'm gonna leave that. I kind of like it that way. Okay. Next thing I'm gonna do is gonna create these little hearts that we have here. So I'm gonna take my template that I've already punched out the center. Okay. Oh, and by the way, when you, when you punch these out, you can take a little piece of fine sandpaper or a nail file and go in here and get the little, the little things that connect it okay. so that they're nice and smooth. It works really well. I'm trying to purposely pick so that I don't have one of the big holes up here at the top. All right. And I'm gonna take my craft knife and cut this out. My theory for this is if you hold the craft knife loosely in your hand, then it's going to follow the template. It's when you start trying to drive it that you're gonna get off track with the template. Okay. What's cool about this too is you, the whole piece is custom from beginning to end and even you don't know exactly how it's going to turn out. <laughs> no. You don't really see it until you reveal that top layer. There we go. Let's do a little earring down here. Again, I'm driving away from the large divot there. Okay, see I just cut that wrong? I can go right back in here and press it back in. Okay. I know all the ways to fix things because I've made all the mistakes. Well, that's how you go pro, right? <laughs> that's right. Fix everything. Now, I'm gonna pull this up. There okay. we go. Get this all released from here. Neat. And I'm just gonna give it a little bit more sass here. Yeah, you gotta make it your own. Yeah, I gotta you make can't it your own. It. Yeah, you can't leave the factory model yeah, there. Yeah. Now, if this is too thick for you, you can also take your acrylic roller and roll it just a little bit too. Okay. You just don't want to damage too much. You know, that'll flatten the texture so a little bit for you. So definitely don't send it through the machine again. No, don't okay. send it to the machine again. Once you have your pieces like this, then you can take your needle tool, clean this up just a little bit with your noodle tool. That works really well for it. There we there go. You go. One of the properties of, of the clay that I'm using is that you can also drill it after it's baked easily by hand or using one of the handheld hobby drills if you oh, want okay. to. That Perfect. way you don't have to commit yourself to where you're going to put your holes yet. Right, you can do it after it's baked. That's right. Okay. Now remember there's no waste, correct? Right. We have this beautiful sheet of clay right here that we want to use. A couple ways we can use this. I can take Oh, let's take half this piece so we can save some for the other trick. So this is the piece that you sliced off the top. This is the piece I sliced off the top. Now I can put it back onto one of the colors that are original colors in the set, or I can put it on another contrasting color if I want to. Okay. Once I have it on here, roll it down just a little bit. So you're just rolling it enough to attach it. That's, that's right. And I'm gonna take my tools and go back and recreate oh, okay. the textures again. Nice. Sometimes when I do this, I can't tell which were the original and which were the ones that yeah, I recreated. Yeah, I can see that. You can also take a rubber stamp that has a texture and texture over the top of this also, like I did on the necklace that I'm wearing. You know, yeah, more texture, more, more texture. texture, more color, more texture. Why not? Yeah, that's, that's my saying. The other really fun thing to do with these pieces of scrap is to put it into a mold. And this is a silicone mold. And I'm just using a damp paper towel on here. Okay. You can also spray it with water, but that gets so much overspray on everything. And you see I'm wiping the top because you want the moisture inside, not on the top, because you want the clay to stick out here oh. when you trim it. Yeah, it makes a big difference. Face down, face down, Cindy. I have to tell myself all the time, face <laughs> down. And I take a ball of clay and just press it over the top. Push it in firmly. There we go. Now this cool. looks like a mess, right? To trim from the molds, the mold master has taught me, go from the middle out. 
Oh, instead of trying to slice it all the way across. Exactly, it. because that gives you drag and it pulls and you don't get your, your perfect shape anymore. Isn't that easier? And you don't have to worry about cutting into your mold. No, because you can really feel the mold when you do it this way. Okay. Okay. And then, of course, you rub any edge out from the outside edges in. This one I'm trying to rub out this way. There we go. When I go to remove these, I kind of stretch the mold just a little bit, and then I pop it up. Come on, nice. baby. Nice. Look at that. Isn't that fun? Yes. What a cool way to get some different shapes. Oh, yeah. And these make great bracelets and pendants. And you're again, you're using all your scrap pieces for this. Yeah, so you can really use it up. Right. All right. One other shape that I wanted to show you that is one of my favorites here. I've already gone through and put my detail on here. So we get to do the fun part now. The reveal. But the reveal. I like that. Yeah. The reveal. So let's go ahead and cut off the top here. Ooh, nice thin slice. Yay. You set these aside. Usually I put them on a clean sheet of paper so that I have them safe. And I don't put them, my elbow on them. You know, our craft tables are not exactly. Tales of experience right there. Yeah, I know. And they're not exactly, you know, yards and yards of free acreage either, are they? No, not usually. <laughs> At least mine isn't. Okay. I'm going to leave it like this. Now, this time I'm going to use the roller just a little bit on it. I don't want to damage too much of that texture. And then I'm going to take a cutter. Yeah, I want this size. There we go. And I'm going to just push through it. Now, sometimes I catch it so that I get a little bit of this in there. So it's, it looks like it's not quite a finished piece, sort of. All kinds of fun things you can do with that. And I'm going to peel this up. This is called a hollow bead maker. Okay. And this is what we use for shapes. Now, my big tip with this is I keep these on top of my oven and oh. I turn my oven on to preheat. And then when I pick this up, it's warmed and the clay will lay down on it and stick really easily that way. Good idea. That's and a great tip. And then I also, tip. then I also know where my, where they are too. And we haven't talked about baking this, but once your piece is made, then you're going to, of course, put it in the oven. Correct. Follow the manufacturer's directions at the time and full temperature that they say. Okay. Yes. I'm going to take the heel of my hand and just press this on. Perfect. That's all there is to it. Oh, look, I can take my little hearts and put these on and give them a little dimension, too. That's great. Yeah, I like to get the dimension on that there, don't you? And these are ready to bake. These are ready to bake. Okay. Take them to the oven for me. <laughs> now, you have another tip for scrap clay here, too. I do. And I'm going to show you. Something else here, too. Okay. I've just folded up my oh, yeah. scrap here. Okay. And when I cut it, look at the that. beautiful shapes and colors in there. That can be sliced and wrapped around the scrap bead also to make some really interesting beads. And what I use these for is when I make what's called Beads of Courage. Yeah, now that's a special program that we've learned about before here on Beads, Bobbles, and Jewels for kids who are hospitalized and they can participate in Beads of Courage. Right. But polymer clay artists all over the world contribute beads, right? Absolutely, yes. Our, our guild in San Diego um, contributes every month. That's amazing. I know. We have one wonderful member who makes them, makes a lot of them, and she collects everybody's and sends them off every month. And what they want from us, because the program has grown so much, they now buy their beads that they use, the solid color beads, and each color determines what kind of procedure they've, they've right. had. It's a way that kids can share their story with people. Yes. And they like to have ours to space in between because it shows this was this hospital visit, this was this hospital visit. Yeah, plus and they, it's an extra special handmade It is, piece. it is. And this, it's a great way to use your scraps. Yeah. And use your clay, anything you want to. They like different shapes. Hmm. So I thought what I would show you is a little bit of Bead Rolling 101. Okay. Did you like to see? We just have a couple of minutes. Okay. Of course, you know to make a round bead, you cup your hand. I've learned this from my kids. My kids taught me this when they were like 10, okay? You cup your hand and you get a round bead. If you flatten your hand out and you roll around on the edge of your palm like this, you get a football shaped bead. I did not know that. I know, isn't that cool? Yes. Oh, that's what kids are for. That's you know? right. Yes. If you want to make what is called a bicone bead like this, then you take something that is flat, can be a piece of glass, it can be a tile, whatever. You lay it down here and you start to roll, keeping this, this level and this level parallel to each other. The amount of pressure you put on it determines the size of it. And as I roll it out, it's going to make us a beautiful bicone. That is so bicone. cool. The trick is trying to make two the same. You're right. <laughs>